Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice functional equation. So a and b are integers. So from the set of integers to the set of integers, we have a function f such that f of f of a plus b equals f of 2a plus 2 times f of b. And we're going to try to solve for f. Now this problem is actually an IMO shortlist problem proposed by South Africa in 2019. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we have f of f of a plus b equals f of 2a plus 2f of b. Great. And again, a and b are integers. So we're going to start by replacing a with 0 and b with x plus 1. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. On the left-hand side, we're going to get 0 plus x plus 1, so it's going to be f of f of x plus 1 equals f of 2a, which is going to be f of 0, plus 2 times f of b, which is 2 times f of x plus 1. So that's the first equation we're going to get, right? And we can go ahead and now replace a with 1 and b with x. And that's going to do something similar. On the left-hand side, we're going to get f of f of 1 plus x, which is the same as x plus 1, equals f of 2a, which is f of 2, plus 2 times f of b, which is f of x. All right? So we kind of got a system of equations, which is nice because we have that flexibility. You know, we have the a and b. So we can replace them with pretty much anything we want, as long as they're integers, right? And notice that we have the same expression on the left-hand side. Therefore, we have the same thing on the right hand side as well. So we can basically set this equal to that because if two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. So f of zero plus two times f of x plus one equals f of two plus two f of x. And this is actually very nice because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the variables on the same side and the constants on the other side and we're gonna arrive at something very important. Okay, let's go ahead and subtract 2f of x and f of 0, right? And then we're going to factor out a 2. And you probably guessed the next step if you said we're going to divide by 2, right? So from here, we get the following. f of x plus 1 minus f of x equals f of 2 minus f of 0 divided by 2. Awesome. Notice that f of 2 and f of 0 are both constants and their difference is also a constant. And when you divide a constant by 2, it's also a constant. So I guess you could call this something like a C maybe for constant, C for constant. So f of x plus 1 minus f of x is constant. Now, what does this mean? If x was a real number, obviously this would be a little different. But since x and x plus 1 are both integers, this implies that f is linear because with linear functions, you can only get this type of constant difference if you are dealing with integer values. Make sense? Think about the slope of a line. So since f is linear, then I'm not going to get into the proof, but I guess we could do it in another problem. That shouldn't be too hard. We can replace f of x with something like mx plus n. I'm trying to avoid a and b because we use them in the original equation, right? So now, since f is linear, we can write it that way. And now we're going to go ahead and sub this, I mean, substitute into the original equation. Let me remind you what that was. f of f of a plus b equals f of 2a plus 2f of b. Awesome. Now, since we have an expression for f of x, we can basically use it on both sides. f of a plus b is basically going to be you're going to take the argument and then multiply by m, right? And then add n to it. That's going to be the first time application. If you apply f again on this, this is going to be your input now. And you're going to go ahead and multiply this whole thing by m and just add n to it. Make sense? You're doing it twice. Now, f of 2a is just going to be replacing x with 2a. That's going to be 2ma plus n. And a 2 times f of b, f of b is just going to be mb plus n. Easy, right? Now let's go ahead and expand everything and try to simplify this as much as we can. 
Okay, notice that we're gonna get m squared times a plus b from here. I'm gonna try to keep the a plus b as a quantity because later on it's gonna be helpful. Plus mn plus n, right? That equals 2ma plus n plus 2mb plus 2n. Now we can do a couple things. We can go ahead and cancel these out. And then we can go ahead and put these two together. m squared times a plus b plus mn equals 2ma plus mb. So I can kind of take factor out a 2m there and write this as 2m times a plus b. And then I'm going to have a 2n at the end. Okay, so far so good. Are you following? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and subtract this so we can get a common factor. And definitely we're going to factor it. We're also going to bring this over to the left and then we're going to factor it. So it's going to be kind of factorable by grouping. This is how it goes, m squared times a plus b minus 2m times a plus b plus mn minus 2n equals 0. So I kind of made the groups already. Now you can go ahead and factor this and factor that. In this case, the common factor is just going to be a plus b. So if you take out a plus b, you're going to get m squared minus 2m. And here n is a common factor, m minus 2. Do you see what I see? Yes, m squared minus 2m is factorable into m times m minus 2. And now we got a co other common factor. That's what uh, usually what, uh, you know, grouping, uh, factoring by grouping is used for. So now we got m minus 2 and we can kind of take it out. And then inside we're going to have a plus b multiplied by m plus n. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Now when you get a product that is equal to 0, that's nice because you can go ahead and set each factor equal to zero. Now setting this equal to zero is gonna give us something nice because this implies m is equal to two. Nice, doesn't give us anything about n, but that's perfectly fine. And this means what? This means since f of x was written as mx plus n, this just means that we can write f of x as two x plus n, where n is any constant, make sense? So this is going to be basically one of the solutions and obviously n needs to be an integer, right? Because x is an integer and f of x is also always an integer value. Make sense? So far so good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other factor that uh, equals zero. So we have a plus b times m plus n equals zero. Now take a look and I could probably just kind of split it up into two cases with, you know, kind of like a bullet point. Now in the second case, Notice that a and b are variables in our original equation, right? So we can pretty much vary the a, b values. So for example, you can set a equals one, b equals one and get an equation. And then a equals zero, b equals one, get another equation and then solve for m and n because that'll give you a system. But think about it. In order for this to equal zero for all a, b, this is true for all a, b that are integers. You know what that means? It means m must be zero because this is a variable, right? This is kind of like a variable. It can be pretty much like, kind of like x, right? mx plus n, remember that? But it, it's identically zero. So m needs to be zero and n needs to be zero at the same time. So m equals n equals zero gives us another solution, which is f of x equals zero identically, right? That will be our second solution. In other words, this equation has two solutions. One of them is f of x equals 2x plus n. The other one is f of x equals 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.